What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to my channel. I just watched the brand new Netflix movie called Private Life. And Private Life is directed by Tamara Jenkins. It stars Paul Giamatti and Katherine Hahn. A lot of great talent behind the camera and in front of it. I was really excited for this Netflix movie, even though prior to today, I didn't really know anything about it. I was just excited to see it. If you guys don't know how my reviews work, I like to talk about the good, the bad, and then give you my score. Thank you for tuning in to my review for A Star is Born and Venom. But right now, we're talking Netflix movies. Let's get right into it. So an author is undergoing multiple fertility therapies to get pregnant, putting her relationship with her husband on edge. And that is actually the summary on IMDb, but there is a lot more to this story. It's a very emotional story with a lot of different climaxes within those smaller stories. It's a very well done drama. When I say climaxes, I don't mean the definitive climax of the film. I just mean like multiple stories come to a head multiple times within this film. And every single time it happens, I'm very invested. And I think that's because the characters were so well written. This is some of the best writing I have seen on Netflix all year, and this is absolutely one of the better movies I have seen. Now, I already know what a lot of people are going to say. I'll get into that in the negatives. It's not necessarily a negative of mine, but I know a lot of people are going to have some problems with the ending, and I'll get this out of the way right now. I don't think the ending was that bad. Sure, I don't want to say exactly what happens, but it kind of leaves you on edge. It's very ambiguous. Okay, what really happened here and what is going to happen after the credits are done rolling? I think that's the point of the ending. I think that is real life. Sometimes you are left wondering what is going to happen next and you don't get all of the answers. And when I say that is real life, I mean this entire movie is real life. The characters were so real. I was invested because they felt like actual people to me. I wasn't watching Paul Giamatti on screen. Okay, I was watching Paul Giamatti on screen, but it didn't feel like I was watching him, even though I'm a very big fan of his work. I was invested within this character. He plays Richard. She plays Rachel. I was on board with Richard and Rachel, and I loved their relationship. They are determined to make this happen. They want a child, and that's one of the reasons why this story is so important impactful because it is like, oh, this is something that actual people are going through. And at times it was tough to watch. It's a tough movie in general to get through. And I don't mean that it's not well made because it is well made. It's just a very powerful subject. And whether you're on one side of it or the other, whether you're on the side that it actually happens for you and you end up getting what you've wanted all of this time, or you're on the side of uh, maybe you don't get exactly what you want and you just have to live with the things that happen in your life. It's a very tough subject to talk about and I know it's a hard subject to make a movie about. It's something I wasn't expecting going in. I didn't know this story was going to be this emotional. Yes, there is humor and that humor works because it's realistic. Yes, there is tension and I love the tension in this movie. It's just the subject and the topic. It's not something that everybody's going to want to watch. It's not something that everybody's going to be a fan of. It's one of those movies that I never see myself watching again, but I think that's okay. It's kind of like Manchester by the Sea. I will never watch that movie again because it is so emotional, but it's also really well done. And I'm not putting this movie on that level of filmmaking. I'm just saying it's a lot more well done. I was surprised with private life. I didn't think it was going to be this well made, but my goodness, she has so much talent behind the camera. It's not the most exciting movie I've ever seen, and I did say that I will never go back to it again. Those are two things that I could put in the negatives, although I don't consider them negatives when you're talking about how well made the film was and how it made me feel. Parts of it didn't necessarily make me feel good, but I was connected to these characters. I wanted to see them succeed. I wanted to see them reach their goal. It's such an emotional story when you're talking about two people that just want to have a child, even though there are people in their lives that are like children and look up to them as parents. And it's like, you're right there. You literally have somebody right there whether it's your child or not and I don't think they ever really came to the realization and that was kind of a bummer within the story is they had somebody there that loved them as parents and I don't want to get into major spoilers but I'm just saying there are some realizations that were never come to within this story and I don't think that's the character's fault I think it's more on the side of the writing, but I still thought the writing was really well done. Yeah, it's just not a movie that you're going home and talking to your friends about. It's like, oh my god, did you see Private Life on Netflix? That thing's just, uh, it's exciting. That's not really exciting, it's just a drama. A drama that a lot of people will say, well, that's just a Lifetime movie. Why wasn't it on Lifetime? Well, it wasn't a Lifetime movie. It was a lot better than a lot of the Lifetime movies because of the writing and the directing. But I could see how you're not on board with a subject like this because it's a hard one to get through. It's a hard one to stay through the end for. It didn't really make me feel great at times just because of the arguments that they get in and it's trying to accomplish this goal and you can never really accomplish it. It's a hard thing to convey in a movie. I think she did it well, 
but there were parts where I had some minor issues. I think some parts of the story could have been fleshed out a little bit more, and while I didn't have problems with the final scene, I did have a little bit of issues with the ending. It's like these parts that I really wanted to be explored that they were building up to, they never really went down that path. I was slightly disappointed with some elements in the filmmaking, but it's not a major problem that I have, guys. Overall, this story was very surprising. It was emotional. It's something that you rarely see on Netflix. It's not going to be for everybody because of the slightly ambiguous ending, and even an ending that I will say is not very like, uh, I kind of wanted more. I did like the scene. I liked how the scene was made, but I did kind of want to see more of a resolve of this story as a whole, and that is why I am going to give Private Life a 74%, one of the better Netflix movies I have seen this year. Let me know in the comments, guys, what did you think of this movie? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Was it disappointing? Was it too emotional for you? Sometimes I watch a movie, it's a little too emotional for me. Even if it is well made, I'm just like, I'm really not feeling that right now, so I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to try it again later. Did you guys do that? Have you watched the rest of it? Is it Sunday? Is it Monday? Austin, you got to stop talking. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. Next, I am actually watching Malevolent right now, so I'm going to try to push that review out today as well. Two reviews in one day. Why am I talking so fast? I just had coffee before I started this, so that's probably why. You guys are the absolute best, and I'll catch you later.